It's been three years since I left the comforts of big city life to teach school in the little town of Hope Valley. Every winter I spend here, I become more convinced that there's nothing more beautiful than Christmas in my frontier home. It was a difficult year for many of our new neighbors. The people who settled near the river saw their homes swept away in a flood. Some even lost beloved husbands and fathers. But in the true spirit of giving, our town has joined together, promising to those less fortunate a holiday filled with comfort and joy. This is a long list. Uh, I am in charge of the Christmas committee this year. It's a, it's a bigger order than usual. Well, there's extra for the families from the settlement. It's the least we can do to show them how much we care. I agree 100%. So do you think you can get it all here before Christmas Eve? Shouldn't be a problem. Great. I'll come by later with a grocery order. Yeah, I, I wonder what Miss Laveau will say when she hears you've taken over her committee. Mrs. Coulter has been away on her honeymoon with Mr. Coulter. I heard they're due back today. And I'm sure Rosemary will be delighted that someone volunteered in her absence. You don't actually believe that, do you? Christmas is the season for miracles. Miss Thatcher, where would you like this tree? Um, how about right here in the center of town? Sounds like the perfect place to me. <laughs> Jack! Elizabeth? <laughs> How's the work coming? Uh, good. We finished the attic at Mrs. Sullivan's and we just started work over the dentist office. And what about the old houses by the North Road? Seven houses is gonna take some time. Tell the truth, I need to find a few more men to lend a hand. Oh, there's the Lawson family. I was thinking the apartment below Dottie's would be perfect for them. Thanks. Elizabeth, I promised you that I'd find everyone from the settlement a permanent place to go home by Christmas, and I intend to deliver. Christmas is only a week away. Would you please stop worrying? I wish I knew how. Well, I don't know how we're going to pull off a Christmas Eve banquet. And this building project, if you ask me, it's far too ambitious. I think it's fantastic. Any word on when Mayor Gowan is coming back? Faith was going to check on him while she was in Union City, but I haven't heard anything. Well, I really think it's time for you to officially step in as mayor, Abigail. You are head of the town council, and the town bylaws clearly state that when the mayor is absent, the head of the council assume the leadership role. Lawrence, I'm not doing anything official until we know for sure about Henry. And quite frankly, with the cafe, the banquet, and Christmas for Cody, I've got my hands full, thank you very much. I just hope Miss Thatcher knows what she's doing. She may have bitten off more than she can chew. She will be fine if we all pitch in and help. I suppose I could bake a cake or two, or 25. Oh, come on, Florence, it'll be fun. <laughs> Abigail! <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. Of course. Do you have the menu for the banquet? Give me till 3 o'clock. The sooner the better. I'm wondering if we should serve turkey or ham. Maybe both. You know, you're starting to sound a lot like Rosemary. Bite your tongue. Merry Christmas! Oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, if it isn't the happy honeymooners. Hello. Hello. Oh, we had just a Hi, marvelous Jack. time on our honeymoon. I didn't want to come back, but then I realized I had to make an extra special Christmas for my honey bunny. Yep, that would be me. Mm -hmm. Just think, this is our very first Christmas as a married couple. <gasps> and I hate to disappoint you all, but... I absolutely do not have time to head the Christmas committee this year, so someone else will have to remove that terrible, scrawny Christmas tree that Mr. Avery is putting up in front of the saloon. Actually, I'm in charge of the committee this year, and I think that tree's just fine. Hmm, you would, dear. Coastal Thornton, can I play with Rip? Of course you can, Cody. He's in the jail. Oh, Cody, uh, hold on. That reminds me, um, picked up a little something for you when we were in New York. Autographed by Doc Crandall himself. He's the best pitcher in the league. You bet he is. <laughs> what do you say, young man? Thanks, Mr. Coulter. You're very welcome. <laughs> so, need a hand moving the luggage back to your place? No, don't be silly, no. Lee's place is much too small for both of us. Yeah, apparently I am now building Rosemary, the largest house in town. 
Oh. But where will you stay in the meantime? Right next door. <laughs> to me. We're neighbors. Isn't it fabulous? Come take a peek inside. Oh. All right, give me a hand with this. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? Yep. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Careful. It's heavy. What has Rosemary got in here? Lead? <laughs> Souvenirs. Like the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> I can't believe you hauled this thing across an entire continent. Rosemary went Christmas shopping. Every single day we were away. Well, lucky you didn't stay another week. You're telling me. But there's no place like home. It's good to have you back, Lee. Good to be back. So tell me, uh, you and Elizabeth have big plans for the holidays? Yep. But she doesn't know it yet. Okay. All right. Here we come. Ready? Oh, yeah. Can I get your attention? Listen up, everyone. We're lucky we haven't had much snow up on the high ground here yet. People in town know it's getting cold. So they're inviting you to stay with them until we finish building your homes. Oh, we can't impose like that. Oh, sure you can. Nurse Carter is here to help make all the arrangements. There isn't a lot more to say, except let's get you packed up and out of here as fast as we can. I can't believe we're going to have a place of our own by Christmas. Well, you can believe it because it's true. <sighs> Wish I could help with the work, but I'm heading out for a double shift at the mine. It's okay, Mr. Lawson. We've got plenty of volunteers. People are happy to donate supplies. Maggie and Timmy are so excited, I can't get them to sleep at night. Same with that Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, let me help you with that. I'll be fine. You sure? It looks pretty heavy. I said I'll be fine. Frank, we need a hand over here. Cody, please put away the ball. We have lots of things to do today. Like what? Well, first, we are going to be making Christmas decorations for the classroom. My mom said we're going to be having a nativity pageant on Christmas Eve. That's right, we are. What's a nativity pageant? Nativity. It's a play about the birth of Jesus. Are there going to be parts for everyone? Of course there are. And I have ordered very special costumes all the way from Hamilton. And they're going to be my Christmas gift for the class. Um, Miss Thatcher, will we have to audition like we did for Miss Rosemary's plays? I'm going to audition for Mary. There won't be any auditions. The biggest parts are going to go to the students who show the most Christmas spirit by being kind and caring. I want to be one of the wise men. Then I'm sure you will be very kind and very caring. I could clean the chalkboard after school. <laughs> That's a good start, but it's not exactly what I had in mind. Well, then what did you have in mind? You will have to figure it out. <laughs> and after the play, there's going to be a giving tree with presents and special surprises. Yes, Ruby? Even for the new kids? Especially for the new kids. I really want a train set. I've never had a dollhouse. What about you, Maggie? Is there something special you'd like? I once had a bitty Betsy doll, but I lost her. I miss her a lot. Oh. Well, maybe you could draw a picture of her to put on the tree. I'm not very good at drawing. I'll help. That's very kind of you, Emily. All right, everyone, let's get to work on these decorations. Harper, I didn't get to hear what you wanted for Christmas. Guess I just want my mom to be happy again. She really misses my dad. Well, she has you, and that's the most important thing in the world. Come on. Can I help you pack? I can handle it myself, thanks. Wanna tell me what's wrong? Everyone is so happy out there. It's hard being alone at Christmas. Bet it is. We've all been so generous, it's wrong for me to feel sorry for myself. Not wrong. You lost your husband. Why don't you come by the church tomorrow? We can talk. I don't want to put you to any trouble. I'd tell you if it was trouble. But tomorrow? All right. How's it coming? Well, it turns out the floorboards are rotted. We're gonna need some more lumber. You started in the apartment for the Lawsons yet? No. I figure I'd get to that tomorrow. Oh, head to the mill. See if I can get more lumber. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, 
Bill, I need a favor. What kind of favor? Think you could cover for me for about an hour? Honey business? Actually, I promised someone we would pick out a Christmas tree together. Go ahead. Consider it an early Christmas present. Actually, consider it your only Christmas present. <laughs> when I was on my rounds yesterday, I spotted the perfect Christmas tree. I thought we were going to pick one out together. We are. I just thought I'd do a little advanced scouting to save some time, that's all. So? What do you think? Uh, um, it's compact. Well, it's a perfect fit for your old house. Or it's exactly what you need for the jail. You don't like it. Did you hear that? Yeah, sounds like sleigh bells. Over there. Here, boy. Come on. Where'd he go? I don't know. But it looks like he just found us the most perfect tree. <laughs> it's a beauty, all right. Sam Bailey, at your service. Constable Jack Thornton. This is Elizabeth Thatcher. Hello. Is that your wagon? Yep, it's my wagon and my livelihood. I pride myself on having just what my customers need. Hmm. And how long do you think you'll be staying here, Mr. Bailey? <laughs> Don't worry about me, Constable. I'm just passing through on my way to Union City. Need a hand chopping down that tree? I think I can handle it, thanks. All right, I'll leave you to it. Hey, honey, I'm home. Or maybe I'm in Santa's workshop. What do you think? <laughs> wow. I mean, it's, uh, hi. I thought I might as well get started on the holiday decorating. Started? You mean you're not finished? Well, I don't know. The trees look a little bare. You do realize, of course, that most people have one tree. We're not most people. But two trees? Really? Not too silly. There's another one upstairs. <sighs> of course there is. But now there's hardly enough room for all the furniture. There is a place for everything, and everything's in its place. Mm-hmm. You know, you really don't need to go to all this trouble. It's no trouble at all, and thankfully I have the time. Now that Elizabeth is running the Christmas committee, I never realized what a burden it was. I thought you enjoyed being in charge of all that stuff. That was before I was a married woman. Now I can see it's the perfect job for a spinster who doesn't have a husband to take care of. <gasps> I almost forgot. I need to rearrange your closet. Oh, no, 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 that's good. You don't need to do that. I want to. <sighs> your Christmas present is in the closet and... Oh, no, 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 no. I want it to be a surprise. What is it? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise, right? <laughs> Nah, I, I, I'll stay with me. Stay with me. You're gonna love it, though. <laughs> you must be exhausted. Packing up that camp couldn't have been easy. Oh, at least we got everyone settled before sundown. Would you like some dessert? Oh, you know I love your desserts, but I gotta turn in early. Mm -hmm. More construction first thing. It's gonna be another long day. Are you gonna have enough strength to help us decorate that Christmas tree tomorrow night? Oh, you bet. <laughs> I hope you don't mind that I brought some ornaments of my own. No, I love them, especially this one. Oh, that that one was my favorite when I was a kid. <laughs> Looks like Rip used it as a chew toy. I'll fix it. Mounties are handy at lots of things. Oh. Well, how are Mounties at playing Santa? Why do you ask? I need someone to help hand out presents after the pageant. The thing is, I, I wouldn't want to rob someone more deserving of the honor. Please. I really want to make this the best Christmas for the town and for the new families I know. 
All I want is to make it the best Christmas for you. Do you have something in mind? As a matter of fact, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. And if I'm going to do it, I have to do it now. Now as in right now? Oh, man. Really can't wait. Would you do me the honor? The great honor of accompanying me to the Mounty Christmas Ball. The Mounty Christmas Ball? We won't be long. Just an afternoon and evening. It's in Buxton this year. I'll hire a horse and a carriage to take us. Oh, but, um, I have the dinner and the pageant. I promise I'll get you back in time for everything. Oh, Jack. Of course. I'd love to go. It was under the couch the last time I looked. Oh, but don't play with it in class. Are those cookies? Yes, but they are for Christmas Eve, not for breakfast. Miss Abigail, if I bring cookies to school, is that kind of being kind and caring? Well, it does if you do it because you think it will make your friends happy. So it doesn't if I want to get a good part in the Christmas play. I'm afraid not. What if it's both? Well, it's a start. <laughs> Have a good day, Cody. The morning stage just came in. Is there a problem? He's back. C careful, I don't want you to fall. Yeah, I'm not gonna fall unless somebody pushes me. Let's get you home. <sighs> you should save your strength. Yeah, you should save your breath. I'm just fine. Well, this is a surprise. Mayor Gowan refused to stay in the hospital another day. Is he going to be okay? He'll be fine. Right now, he just needs plenty of rest. But he can go back to work, right? Abigail, Henry Gowan's under federal investigation. He's not allowed to serve as mayor unless or until he's cleared. Oh, Paul, well, that is a beautiful house. It's for Bellamy. <laughs> I'm making mine for Betty Betts, but I can't get the roof to stay on. Oh, well, I think you might need some more icing to glue it on. She can use mine. Thanks, Cody. Miss Thatcher, how come Harper isn't here? I don't know. Timmy, did Harper walk with you to school this morning? His mom said not to wait for him. Hello, my dear children. Well, look at all of the wonderful things you're making for Christmas. Miss Thatcher says there's going to be a nativity play, presents, and a Christmas feast. Well, Miss Thatcher is going to be very busy with all of that. And the Mounty Christmas Ball. She's going to a ball with Constable Thornton? How romantic. <laughs> oh, all right, everyone. Let's keep working on our projects. How did you know I was going to the Mounty Christmas Ball? Oh, my dear Elizabeth. The walls of the row houses are paper thin, and your squeaky voice cuts through them like a knife. But never mind all that. I am here on a mission of mercy. Which is? The Mounty Christmas Ball is not just any social event. It is the event of the season. And lucky for you, I have an absolutely stunning gown. I bought it on my honeymoon, and I want you to borrow it. Thank you, but I'm sure I can find something in my closet. From two seasons ago? No. Oh. I guess it has been a while since I've gone shopping for a gown. Let me be your fairy godmother. As long as you don't turn me into a pumpkin. You'll make a beautiful Cinderella. <laughs> now I really must run. I have some digging to do. Digging? Well, Lee bought me a Christmas present while we were on our honeymoon. I haven't been able to find it anywhere. The only time I can look for it is when he's at work. Wouldn't that spoil the surprise? Oh, my dear. Half the fun of a surprise is knowing what it is ahead of time. Here you go. What's all this for? We're leaving town. Leaving? That's kind of sudden. Well, that's the way of things, I guess. You never told me. 
just there to tell. There's nothing here for us, not anymore. Not without Harper's father. Just think about it for a few days. Stay at least till after Christmas. How can we celebrate Christmas without Virgil? Put that on the wagon, Harper. He shouldn't have died. He was a good man. I know he was. You don't know anything. I don't need you. I don't need your church. I don't need any of this. Yes, you do. And we need you. Just let me help. You want to help? Then tell God to give me back my husband. We have to go. Nancy. Nancy, think about what you're doing here. Just leave us alone. Hello, Henry. It's good to see you. Abigail, what can I do for you? I've heard about the accident, and I came to see how you were doing. I, I brought you some muffins. No, well, it's very kind of you. Thank you. How's Nora? Is she coming back to take care of you? Well, you needn't concern yourself with that. I'm quite fine, thank you. Well, then I need to talk to you about some town business. There are bills that have to be paid. Well, if you just leave then, then I'll be back in my office tomorrow. Henry, you can't go back to being mayor. Not yet, anyway. No, says who? The town charter. You're still under federal investigation. And apparently that means you can't serve Hope Valley in any capacity until you've been cleared. I'm sorry. All right. It seems to me that you've gotten what you always wanted. I have a business to run and a child to raise. I certainly do not want your job. And yet you have it. If you could just answer a few questions about these invoices. Well, you are an intelligent woman. I'm sure you will figure it out. I don't have your experience, Henry. No, you do not. I thought we could work together. Well, you thought wrong. You're making this harder than it has to be. Good afternoon, Miss Snap. Why should you get to play Mary? I helped Opal with her spelling test. I showed my lunch with Ruby. Is something wrong, girls? No. no. Good, because we can't be in the Christmas spirit if we're fighting with our best friend, now can we? No. When I was a kid, we did a Christmas pageant, and I wanted to be Joseph, but the, the teacher, she chose someone else to play the part. Hmm. So what part did you get? Shepherd number three. <laughs> Never could figure out how to be the teacher's pet. <sighs> Until now. Is it a problem, Frank? <sighs> Nancy Tucker and her boy left town this morning for good. Oh, no. What happened? Too many memories. <sighs> Harper said something yesterday. I should have spoken with her. I tried to stop her, but I couldn't. I hate to think of her and her son alone on the road at Christmas. Anyway, I'm going to help Lee uh, with the houses by the North Road. I feel terrible. Harper's such a sweet boy. And he was doing so well here. What can we do? We can pray for a miracle. Look, everyone. Whoa! Merry Christmas, boys and girls! You think it's Santa? Looks like he's taking a shine to you. I wish I could have a dog. What's his name? Dasher. Oh, like the reindeer. I knew it was Santa. Did you get my letter about Bitty Betsy? <laughs> I'm just an old peddler, sweetheart. I'm not Santa Claus. But I'm sure he got your letter. <laughs> and you know what? I think he knows you've been a good girl this year, too. <laughs> All right, everyone. It's time to go home. Your parents are waiting for you. Let's go. Bye. Mr. Bailey, 
I thought you were headed to Union City. I was, but then, well, I figured maybe I should stick around a little while longer. And this place sure has grown up since the last time I was here. Uh, when was that? Oh, so long ago, I've forgotten. But what I remember is people around here, pretty friendly. Well, they still are. As long as you abide by the rules. Uh, I can save you the trouble, son. No selling moonshine, no selling any home remedies might happen to be moonshine, no disturbing the peace, and no disturbing anyone at all. Well, unless, of course, they want to be disturbed. <laughs> I think you understand things pretty well. Some say. Atta boy. You're staying till Christmas? I guess that kind of depends on what people around here need. It's like I said before. I'm good at helping people find what they're looking for. Like the perfect Christmas tree. <laughs> Something like that. I don't think I've been this busy in my entire life. Well, if you're concerned about becoming mayor, Abigail, I don't blame you. It's a tall order. So you don't think I can handle it? I didn't say that. Well, then what are you saying? I'm just saying that it's a big job for a... For a what? Well, for a... For a busy businesswoman and mother like yourself. It's just a lot of responsibility. I see. But since you're my business partner, I guess you'd have no problem running the cafe if I take over as mayor for a while. Unless, of course, it's too much responsibility for you. Bring on the apron. Looking for something special. I don't suppose you have any hair jewels, do you? Oh, I'm afraid I don't have anything quite so fancy. Neither does Mr. Yost. And the Mountie Ball is in three days. And you'll be the belle of that ball, with or without those fancy hair bobs. <laughs> well, it, it seems like the mercantile's out of just about everything this week. Uh, maybe I can help? Do you have any pepper? I'm trying to make a shepherd's pie. Oh, actually, it's paprika that you need. Right, paprika. It's my first time. I'm not a very good cook. Oh, I wasn't any good at first either. Just takes practice. Paprika. Let me see. Um, nope, I'm all out. But maybe you've got some in your pantry. I do. In fact, I was planning on making a shepherd's pie later tonight. You could come by if you like and we could make it together. I'd like that. All right. See you soon. Great. <laughs> yeah, it makes a fella happy seeing folks getting together for the holidays. Caring for each other, giving kindness. Now, that's what the Christmas spirit's all about, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I'd say. I guess it's a lucky thing you were out of paprika. Yep, lucky indeed. Hopefully this place doesn't need too much work. Well, it's only been vacant for six months. How bad could it be? <clears throat> I remember it being different. Eh, it's not as bad as it looks. My crew will get it fixed up in no time. Just got to replace that window, panel up the walls, fix that hole. And as for the chimney that was connected to the stove, which isn't there anymore. The Lawsons can't live here this time of year without a stove. Well, what are the chances of getting one by Christmas? If I know Elizabeth, she'll find a way to make it happen. OK, well, let's get to it. Yes. You want to tell me what you're doing? My apologies. I knocked over your trash, but I'm putting everything back. Doesn't look like everything. I kept a few scraps for Dasher. That's him over there. Dog eats scones? He has a refined palate. Do I know you? Could be. 
Ah, uh, you look familiar yourself. Did you play golf by chance? No. Didn't I arrest you once? Dougal Flats, petty theft. The arm of the law has embraced me from time to time, but those days are long gone. I'm a peddler, not a thief. Well, they can't be much of a profit in being a peddler. Helping people find what they need is what I do best, but it is more of a calling than a way to make a living. But that's all right. Well, maybe for you, but I bet Dasher might like something a little better than a stale scone. You wait here. I'll heat up some leftover stew. You are kinder than St. Nicholas himself. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, there's nothing wrong with spreading a little happiness. Hey, honey. Well, would you look at that? Isn't it amazing? No candles. <gasps> Lee, candles are so passe. Welcome to Christmas in the 20th century. If you say so. <laughs> now, you just settle in right there while I finish making dinner. All right. Here's your newspaper. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank goodness I have the time to take care of my husband the way he truly deserves. Look, I, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but maybe you take care of me just a little too well. I just want you to be happy. I'm always happy when I'm around you. <laughs> now I need to get back to the stove. I've made all your favorites, steak and potato pie, Yorkshire pudding, dumplings and gravy. We're all on the same night? They say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Say anything about heartburn? Hmm? Nothing. <laughs> you know, I'd never had shepherd's pie until I came to Hope Valley. Now I think it's my favorite. Well, next time we can try spaghetti. Sounds like fun. <laughs> Are you going back to Hamilton for Christmas? No. I thought I'd be spending the holidays with my fiance, but... You know it wasn't right with him. I know. To tell you the truth, I was worried I'd be spending the holidays alone. Well, we are not going to let that happen. If you have some free time, I could really use some extra help on the Christmas committee. OK. <laughs> well, I'd better get out of your way. Let you plan for the Mountie Ball. Oh, so you've heard about that. <laughs> I think everyone has. You and Jack are going to make a lovely couple. Thank you. If you run across any eligible Mountie bachelors while you're there, Lee, wrap one up for me. With a big red bow. <laughs> Working on your sermon for Christmas Eve? Oh, I am so sorry. I lost track of time. Oh, it's okay. Cody and I decorated the tree, and then I heard you were here, so I brought you some dessert. Oh. That's awfully kind of you. So, how's it coming? Four drafts, none of them good. Still searching for the right inspiration? Something like that. Well, just take a look around town at all the happy faces. That should help. Not everyone's smiling. Frank, I know you're upset about Nancy, but you did all you could. Yeah, and it wasn't good enough. You're being too hard on yourself. You know, I asked everyone in the settlement where they might have gone, and no one knows. You can't fix everyone. Nancy's not everyone, Abigail. I watched her husband die. Couldn't do anything about it. My father used to say, we're all soldiers. Sometimes we win. And sometimes we lose. But we fight the good fight, and that's what matters. And if you don't believe me, ask him. Thank you. The gentleman at the table near the door would like to talk to the cook. What do they want? They say they don't like their eggs. Somebody here got a problem with my eggs? Are you the cook? Yeah. And I get really steamed when people don't like what I serve. So let me ask you again. You got a problem with my eggs? 
No. No problem. Good. Make sure you leave the little lady a nice tip. How's your breakfast, Constable? No complaints here, Bill. Hey, Jack. I'm glad I found you. Everything okay? Actually, no. Um, I bought Rosemary a piece of jewelry for Christmas at an auction at Sotheby's. Right there. <laughs> Paid a pretty penny for it, too. I went to get it this morning. It was gone. Oh, well. You sure it didn't crawl away? Ha, make fun all your life, but I will have you know these are all the rage in New York right now. Lady Astor has one just like it. Anyway, it was in a jewelry box at the bottom of my trunk. And you think it was stolen? Well, it must have been. It was there yesterday. Mr. Coulter, can I get you anything? Actually, no. Um, couldn't eat a bite. Rosemary's been stuffing me like a holiday turkey. I do like the apron, though. Oh, thanks. I got it from Sam. Sam, the peddler. Does anybody know anything about him? I sent a wire to Mountie HQ. No one has ever heard of Sam Bailey. Well, that's strange. He told me he did some jail time. They couldn't find any records. Interesting. Gentlemen, how fortunate to catch you all together. Well, how can we help you, Miss Thatcher? I am here on official Christmas business. Which is? Well, so far, none of the men in this town have stepped forward to play Santa on Christmas Eve. Uh... So I don't care how you boys do it. Just find someone to volunteer. Yes, ma'am. Um, Elizabeth, hmm? with you in charge of Christmas this year, Rosemary has a lot of free time on her hands, which isn't necessarily a good thing. So I was wondering if maybe you might, um... If I could give her something to do. It would save me a great deal of indigestion, yes. Consider it done. Thank you. I owe you. How's it going? You tell me. Bill hasn't shot any of my customers, has he? Um, I don't think so. Oh, that's good. I have to get a new town budget approved by New Year's. It's going to be a while before I'm in front of that stove again. But Christmas Eve is only three days away. Are you sure you can handle the banquet, Abigail? Well, Bill will do most of the cooking, but I'll do the coordinating. Just wish I had more time to spend with Cody. Well, if you don't have a gift for him yet, I happen to know he really wants a dog. He's getting a baseball cap. <laughs> well, I am officially out of a job, just in time for Christmas. Henry fired you? Oh, that's right. And he won't let Nurse Carter anywhere near him. It's like he's trying to shut out the world. I thought I could get through to him, but I can't. I need a cup of tea, please. Oh. Maybe you should talk to him, Abigail. I could try, but the last time I did, he nearly bit my head off. Listens to you more than anyone else. Hmm. Well, I may be unemployed, but on the bright side. Rosemary brought over the gown she's loaning you for the Mountie Christmas ball. I now have all the time in the world to do the alterations. Alterations? She said it needs to be let out in the waste and taken in at... other places. Excuse me? Other places? <laughs> yeah. Can I give Dasher a treat? <laughs> that sounds like a yes. You must be excited with Christmas right around the corner. I guess so. Oh, well, something wrong. It's the nativity pageant. My friend Anna and I both want to play Mary. Ah, uh, and you think you deserve it more. Well, I do. Well, seeing as it's Christmas, maybe you should let your friend have the part. Well, seeing as it's Christmas, maybe she should let me have the part. Uh, it's always better to give than receive. Yeah, we take Dasher here. Why did you ask to feed him a treat? Because dogs like treats. You see? It's not the joy you get from something. It's the joy you get from giving something. My teacher said the same thing. Well, she's one smart lady. I have to find out. You're up early, Pasta. You got work to do. Yeah. Finish that sermon. You ask too many questions. You sound like a man who's lost the Christmas spirit, my friend. I got just the thing for it right here. Dr. Orthon's Miracle Elixir. I don't look for answers in the bottom of a bottle. I'm guessing there was a time when you did. Ancient history. And then you found answers from above. Pretty much. At least till now. What changed? Couldn't help a friend. She took her son and left town. Uh, it seems to me you've had it pretty easy here so far. Town of good God-fearing people. 
Maybe the fact you've been given a challenge means you're ready for something more. Or maybe I'm not. Got my work cut out for me with this one. I got a bitty Betsy for Christmas. She can have a tea party with Brownie. Brownie would like that. They can visit Ruby's dollhouse. Maggie, if you and Opal want to come to the cafe with your doll, you can have a real tea party. Do you really mean it? I'll ask Miss Abigail, but I bet she'll say yes. Miss Thatcher, hmm? Anna and I need to talk to you. About what? We've been thinking about the pageant, and we think Ruby should get to play Mary. You do? She's new. It would mean a lot to her. But I thought you both wanted to play Mary. We did, but we decided that being friends is more important than fighting all the time. Emily, is there something wrong? This was Harper's ornament. You miss him, don't you? Yeah. When I'm worried about someone, I say a prayer for them. I'll say a prayer for Harper at bedtime. I will too. Oh, Mr. Newlywed, how's married life? It's everything I thought it would be. I've done enough interrogations to know an evasive answer when I hear one. First rule of a happy marriage, and if do anything, the rosemary might take the wrong way. <laughs> Gentlemen, how are we going to settle this? Darts. Loser, where's the big red suit? So who goes first? I feel lucky. Well... I guess we know who's playing Santa. As someone wise once said, there's nothing wrong with spreading a little happiness. Deck the hall with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Don't you know our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Throw the ancient suit like carol, fa la 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 la. Only three days till Christmas, and there's still lots to do. We'll all be taken care of by the time we leave. It's been years since I've been to a Christmas ball. And I've never been to a Mountie ball. Tell you the truth, I'm a little nervous. Nervous? Why? There's going to be dancing. And? And I'm pretty good at the two-step, but I've never really gotten the hang of the waltz. Waltz is easy. Do you think that you could show me? <laughs> right here, right now? Yeah. Why not? Well, there isn't any music. I couldn't help overhearing. I'll leave you to it. <laughs> and you put one hand here. And your other hand goes on my waist. I like this already. Jack, you're not paying attention. Now that's where you're wrong. I heard our apartment is going to be a lot of work. Kurt will pay you back just as soon as we're settled. Mrs. Lawson, all you have to do is be a good neighbor. Just the same, we don't like taking charity. We can talk about all oh, that later. Do you mind if I ask? Is this new piece you've acquired? Isn't it beguiling? That's one word for it. Excuse me. It's amazing. You would buy that for yourself. Well, I needed something special to wear for Christmas Eve. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, ladies, but I need to speak to Mrs. Blakely for a second. Of course. Thank you. That is an interesting piece of jewelry. Thank you, Constable. Is it new? I bought it from that lovely peddler, Mr. Bailey. He said it's one of a kind. I bet it is. Too bad there's only one, though. It would look great with the gown Elizabeth is wearing at the Mountie Ball. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. I know that you can't put a prize on something like that, Mrs. Blakely, but I'd be willing to give you twice what you paid for it. It would mean a lot to me. 
and then you could get yourself something even nicer. Well, there was a dragonfly pinned at a truly stunning piece, but it cost ten dollars. You know what, Mrs. Blakely? I think you deserve to have a stunning Christmas. Well, if you insist. Does Dasher know any tricks? Most dogs like to play catch. Not with this ball. Hey, Cody. Aren't you late for school? I guess so. What can I do for you, Constable? Well, I just spoke to Mrs. Blakely, and she told me that you sold her this uh, special piece of jewelry. So I did. Hard to forget that one. Now you might tell me where you got it? Oh, I buy and sell a lot of things. It's hard to keep track of them all. Really? Because this one happens to be stolen property. I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe the circuit judge can jog your memory. But I'm afraid he won't be coming through town till after Christmas. I still can't remember. That's a shame. Because you know I'm going to have to arrest you. Well, you've got to do what you've got to do. May I have your attention, please? All right, everyone. It is time to assign the parts for the nativity pageant. Now, several of you have shown excellent Christmas spirit, and I am very, very proud of you. All right, Ruby, you'll be playing the role of Mary. Hattie and Anna, there will be two angels this year because the two of you have both been angels. Cody, you'll be playing one of the wise men. And Robert and Timmy, you will also be wise men. Do we get to ride camels? <laughs> I'm afraid they were fresh out of camels in Buxton. But your new costume should be arriving first thing tomorrow morning. Um, Emily, would you mind finishing reading the cast list? Thank you. Opal, you're going to be a little drummer girl. If this is about the gown for the Mountie Ball, I'm kind of in the middle of something. N not at all. N Dottie is finishing the alterations as we speak. No, I am here because Lee told me you were in desperate need of help with the Christmas festivities. Well, it wasn't really an emergency. Now, I know it's hard for you to admit that you are in over your head and you don't want to exhaust yourself before the Mountie Ball. You certainly don't want any more of those unsightly little worry lines. I don't have worry lines. Of course you don't. Thankfully, I have done dozens of these Christmas pageants and I am ready to jump right in. Actually, what I really need is some help stringing popcorn for the Christmas tree. Stringing popcorn? Mm-hmm. Jump right in. Henry. I told you I didn't want to talk about any town business. That's not why I'm here. Why did you fire Dottie? Fired Dottie because I no longer had use for her services. But she was trying to take care of you until you got back on your feet. And why are you here? Are you here because you care about me? Is that so hard to believe? A while ago, that might have meant something to me. A while ago? You know, believe it or not, I cared about what happened to you after your husband passed. That's one of the reasons why I invested in your cafe. It was a business deal. You were just trying to make money. Well, you can believe whatever you'd like. Henry, I know that you're upset about a no, lot of here's things. Here's what you know. What you know is that I don't want your help. You're here because you want to feel good about the fact that you made an effort. You're here because you want to be able to go to sleep at night comforted by the fact that you know that you tried. You're just saying that because you think I took your job. <laughs> Why can't we just stop playing games here? Why, why can't you just admit that you enjoy feeling morally superior to the rest of us? You're here for you. Not for me. For you. If you really believe that, then there is nothing more to say. Oh, I really believe that, so I guess we're done. We're done. could use some more coffee. Really?
Most people don't like my coffee. Well, most people forget to be grateful. That's true enough. Got any family, Sam? The world is my family. The world's your family. You sure are hard to read. What I do is who I am. You got a special occasion coming up? The Mountie Christmas Ball. I bet you're taking that pretty school teacher. Yep. Gonna hire a carriage. Go in style. Got it all planned out. Yeah, you seem like the kind of guy who always has everything planned. I guess I do. Plans are a funny thing, you know. How's that? Well, they don't always turn out the way you expect. You take me, for instance. I didn't plan on spending the night in jail. No, I suppose you didn't. Yeah, a few hours ago, I was hungry, cold. Now I got a roof over my head, a hot meal. Sometimes what you don't want turns out to be exactly the thing you need. It's kind of the story of my life. How's that? Well, time was, like most people, I wanted to be rich, powerful, important. Well, I never got to be those things. So I had to make a different life for myself. I had to figure out what I really wanted. Well, I guess we all got to figure that out sooner or later. Yeah. And when life doesn't go the way you want, it's a good time to stop and think about it. Five golden rings. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And, and a partridge in a pear tree. Pear tree. You're a really good singer, Mr. Avery. <laughs> oh, and a good babysitter. Well, thanks to you both. Well, off to bed with you, young man. It's late. Good night. Night. <sighs> As a rule, it's good to have dinner before midnight. Well, with the town budget, committee meetings, hearings, and all these invoices to pay, I must have lost track of time. <laughs> so, how was your visit with Henry today? Or should I ask? Well, let's just say it wasn't pleasant. Abigail, forget about Gowan. You're trying too hard. You're absolutely right. And there's so much to do. I had no idea how much work went into running a town. Well, that's my point exactly. Gowan should be thanking you for relieving him of his duties. Well, and I should be thanking you for babysitting Cody. And for this soup. It's almost as good as mine. I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> mm. Rosemary, you're up early. I didn't catch a wink of sleep after I heard what had happened. How could you arrest that lovely old man? Mr. Bailey? Just doing my job. You have made a terrible mistake. How so? He didn't steal that oh, horrible pin. How do you know what he stole, Rosemary? <laughs> Funny thing, that. Amuse me. Well... I just happened to be straightening out these things when, lo and behold, I accidentally found this small box. You accidentally unwrapped it and opened it? Well, the details aren't important. What is important is, have you seen that thing? I have. Oh, well, then you know I could never warn it. So you sold it to Sam? Well, I didn't want to hurt Lee's feelings. I thought that if he thought he had lost it, well, then he would just pick something else out. Something a little less ugh, terrifying. I know he means well. Oh, Jack, I didn't know what to do. I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to do. Your husband bought you a very special gift for your first Christmas together. So, you were going to put it right back where you found it, then on Christmas morning when he gives it to you, you will act surprised and delighted. Surprised and delighted? You're a very talented actress. It'll be the performance of a lifetime. Do you promise not to say a word about what happened? My lips are sealed. You should have told me Rosemary Coulter sold you the pen. Oh, it wouldn't have been right. Because? Well, the way I see it, I gave the young lady an opportunity to learn a lesson about telling the truth which is exactly what she needed for Christmas. So it all worked out the way it was supposed to. 
Come on, Dasher. Pastor! You're just the man I want to see. I got something for you. I don't think you have anything I need. Don't be too sure. What do you say? Man of God can always use a Bible, and I'll let it go for cheap. Uh, that's okay. I've got plenty of those at church. Uh, this is pretty old. I got it from Granville Penitentiary. They were giving away some old books. Wait. Do you mind if I look at that for a second? I did time at Granville. A lot of people did time at Granville. I saved it because of the inscription on the back. St. Francis' prayer. Lord, let me be an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. It's a favorite of mine. Mine too, which is why I wrote it there. This was my Bible. Is that right? He must have changed a lot of lives with this book. And I have a feeling you're going to change a lot more. Like that friend you were telling me about, the one with the little boy. She left without telling anyone where she's going. There's no way to find her. Three wise men found Bethlehem by following a star. Yeah, well, they had a lot of help. So have you, my friend. How much do you want for them? Oh, take it. The way I look at it, I'm just returning it to its rightful owner. Good morning, Ms. Yost. Katie. Katie, when, when Nancy Tucker came to you for supplies, did she happen to mention where she was headed? I don't think so. Wait, she did say she needed enough rations to get to Albert Falls. Albert Falls. Thanks. Looks like the pastor just found his star after all. Pretty snug. You want to hand me that mallet? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Freight wagon's late. That silly wagon is always running late. I'm sure it'll be here in no time. I just want to make sure everything's taken care of before we leave for the ball tonight. Don't you worry about it. I will tie up any loose ends. You will? Of course. You asked for my help. And Christmas is the season for giving. Hmm. Pardon me. I thought I should deliver this in person. Thank you. Train derailed outside Union City. Track closed. There won't be any deliveries till after Christmas. Oh. Everyone's going to be so disappointed. Oh, it's not that bad. Yes, it is. What am I going to tell the children? Timmy wanted a train set, and Ruby had her heart set on a doll's house, and poor Maggie, all she wanted was Biddy Betsy. Maggie isn't going to get her doll? Cody, why don't you run outside and play for a little while? The stove I ordered for the Lawsons was on that train. They'll understand. I know, but it's so unfair. Better let Jack know. No, we're fine. But we could use some help shoring up the beam. Excuse me. Elizabeth. Jack. I got some bad news. You heard about the train? It gets worse. A beam fell at the apartment we're fixing up for the Lawson family. Now, we're all OK, but we're behind schedule. What are we going to do? Whatever we have to. Now, we said we're going to make this a special Christmas for the town. We're going to deliver, even if we have to work straight through to Christmas Eve. But the Mountie Ball. Yeah. I really want us to go. I think this is more important. I'm so glad you said that. We can't leave now. 
So, what's the next step? If I could have everyone's attention, just because the freight wagon didn't come through doesn't mean we have to give up on Christmas. It just means we have to change our plans. Because everything we need, we have right here in Hope Valley. Where are we going to get toys for the children? Well, we'll make them ourselves. There simply isn't time. Christmas Eve is tomorrow night. We can do it if we all pitch in. When I was a girl, we made dolls from corn husks and clothespins. <laughs> well, there's plenty of scrap wood at the mill to build toys with if we want. Well, what about the new homes for the settlers? I heard they can't be finished in time. Anything can be fixed. All we need are a few extra sets of hands. What are we going to do about the stove for Kurt and Wilma's place? I've kept my old stove, but the bottom's rusted out. We got a new welder in town. Mr. Edwards, I'll see what he can do. Well, what about costumes for the nativity pageant? I could probably whip something up. I have a wonderful idea. Why don't we hold the nativity pageant right here? We could decorate it to look like an old barn. It'll be like a real manger. There's still Christmas Eve dinner. Well, for about a hundred of us. Leave that to me. Everyone go home and look through your pantries. Then go to your neighbor's house and look through their pantries. Whatever you can spare, bring to the cafe. I think this calls for a vote. All those in favor of saving Christmas, say aye. Aye! Oh. What can I do for you, young man? I need a toy. Do you have any left? Oh, I'm sorry, it's almost Christmas. I'm all out of toys. Oh. Uh, what was it you were looking for? A doll. It was for a friend. I see. You're trying to be a good boy so you get a part in that Christmas pageant. I already got the part. Well, then you don't need to give her the doll. I just want to, I guess. And I promised she could have a tea party at Miss Abigail's. Now that I think on it, just might have something left. Let me check. Oh, it's not very fancy, I'm afraid. Just an old bitty Betsy doll. That's just what she wanted. Imagine that. Can I buy it? Oh, it's my last one. I've got seven cents. She's worth more than that, wouldn't you say? It's all I've got. Maybe we could make a trade. I brought these cotton balls from the infirmary. I thought we could use them as stuffing for the dolls. Oh, those will do very nicely. I haven't done much sewing apart from stitching up cuts and scrapes. We're very glad you're here. <laughs> Indeed. I've never built a house for a doll before. Well, it's just like building a real house, only uh, smaller. Y yes, but a real house has a set of plans. I took the liberty of drawing something up. It's got the flavor of a Frank Lloyd Wright colonial revival. Great, great. Yeah, this is pretty much a goner. Bottom's all rusted out. Yeah, and the firebox is cracked, too. So? How long do you think it'll take to fix? Well, maybe a couple of days. Think you can get it done by tomorrow night? I'll do my best. Thanks, George. Frank, you look like you're headed somewhere in a hurry. Nancy Tucker. Gip! Good luck. So what have we got? Canned fish, canned oysters, more canned fish, more oysters, lots and lots of beans, and then there's some bacon from Campbell's Farm. Not much of it. Ned Yost brought over the flour and the sugar and the potatoes, but he says it's the last of it. And you knocked on every door. Everyone was counting on the freight wagon, so there wasn't much left. How do we make a Christmas Eve banquet out of this? We start with an oyster soup, fish stew, potato pie, bacon and beans, and we finish it with a carrot and chicken surprise casserole. But we don't have any chicken. That's the surprise. <laughs> What's the count? Well, including the ones that you brought, we have a dozen that are ready. Uh, that leaves 28 to go. We still need to do finishing touches on the tree and the backdrop for the play. And it's getting late. Do you think they work this hard in the North Pole? The next time I see Santa, I'm going to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail. Uh, 
Abigail. What time is it? It's nearly three. Where's Clara? I sent her upstairs to take a break. How are things going at the saloon? Oh, people are fading fast. We're gonna have to do something if we want to finish on time. Well, I guess it's time for my secret weapon. You have a secret weapon? Special blend of coffee from south of the border. I use it when I track Billy the Kid to the coast of Mexico. Stayed awake for three straight days. Oh, well, let's not make it that strong. I'll boil the water. Finish the place for the Lawson family. And the stove? Well, George Edwards fixed it, so I'm gonna take it over there as soon as I can find a volunteer with a wagon. It just so happens I have one of those. You're on, Sam. <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm kind of glad the freight train didn't come through. You're right. That does sound crazy. I always knew the people of Hope Valley really cared about each other, but I never realized how much. Well, I guess good things really do happen when plans change. Truer words were never spoken. I'll hitch up the horse when we go get that stove. Sounds good. Good work. You too. Pastor. You wouldn't by chance have a cup of coffee for a weary traveler, would you? Of course. What are you doing out here? I was worried about you and your ma. You don't have to worry about us. We'll be fine. So where are you headed? Someplace new. There are too many memories in Hope Valley. They're not all bad. It's where your father died, Harper. It's where he taught me how to fish. And where I made friends. Harper. You still have friends there. And I think they'd like you to come back. And I'd like you to finish up your coffee and leave. I already said I don't want anything from you. Yeah, you did. Then I remembered a prayer I learned a long time ago. Lord, let me be an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where, where there is sadness, sadness joy. St. Francis prayer. My dad taught it to me. It was his favorite. I didn't know. I think your husband would like you to come back, Nancy. Dad was the one who brought us to Hope Valley, Mama. He used to say that he always knew what was best. I think he still does. Sam. Bless you. Good boy. Uh. <laughs> hey, Jack, you got a minute? Yeah, Lee. Hey, 
I just took the stove to the Lawson's place. Uh, some of the ladies are cleaning up now. Oh, great. Well, then I, I have some more good news. Um, remember the gift that I bought for Rosemary that went missing? The pin. The pin, yes. Well, turns out they was at the bottom of the trunk after all. It slipped behind the lining. I don't know what happened. Anyway, I'm really sorry if I caused any trouble. No trouble at all. I'm just glad you found it. <sighs> Me too. I can't wait to see Rosemary's face when she opens that box. Uh, I bet she's going to be surprised and delighted. I hope so. Anyway, I'll see you tonight, okay? I think if we put the buffet against the wall and move the tables out, there'll be enough standing room for everyone. Christmas is officially back on track. Well, except that you and Jack didn't get to go to the Mountie Ball. It was the right decision to stay. Can I go play with Robert? Yes, if you were back in time to get ready for the pageant. Okay. Cody, where's your baseball? I traded it. Traded it? With who? Mrs. Stanton, I don't think we've had the pleasure of a formal introduction. No, but I've heard all about you, and I know you've met my little boy. Cody. Yeah, I saw him earlier. Oh, I'm not looking for him. I came to talk to you about the baseball. It was a fair trade. May I ask what he got in exchange? Humanity, kindness, everything Christmas is all about. I don't think you answered my question. Well, Cody traded that ball for something one of his friends wanted. He said she'd be heartbroken if she didn't get it for Christmas. A Bitty Betsy doll? One and the same. And you had one? Yes, indeed. You know, it's funny how those kind of things just work out sometimes. He really loved that baseball. I can't believe he did that for Maggie. He's a pretty special young man. Yes, he is. We're serving Christmas Eve dinner tonight for everyone in town. I, well, I hope you'll join us. Well, that's a fine invitation, but I think I'm heading out soon. I don't want to wear out my welcome. Well. If you change your mind, we'd love to have you. How about you, Mrs. Stanton? Any last-minute shopping to do? Oh, I think I've got Christmas taken care of. You sure you haven't forgotten anyone? I'm sure. Well, there is Henry Gowan, but he doesn't want anything from me or anyone else. Yeah, I saw him out for a walk. He looked like a real sourpuss to me. That's him, all right. So why are you worried about him at all? I don't know. Maybe because he's one of us, for better or worse. Have you told him that? Well, he didn't give me a chance. He said I was pretending to care to keep up appearances. Oh, that can't be true. It's not. Well, I guess I'm right out of luck. Well, how's that? Because the best gift you can give old sourpuss for Christmas is the truth. Even though I'd rather sell you a necktie. <laughs> I think I will pass on that. <laughs> Thank you for everything, Mr. Bailey. You've been a real angel. But I've been called worse. <laughs> to lock that door. I thought we were done here. We were. And then someone started me thinking. And I realized something. There's a reason you're here, Henry. There's a reason you came back. I need to listen to this right now. Yes, you do. And you're going to hear me out whether you like it or not. You came back to Hope Valley because this is your home. And the people here are your family. You need us, Henry. And the truth is, I need you. So you were right after all. I am here for me. I'm here because I have a town to run and I need your help to do it. And I won't let you push me away. I'll be back tomorrow and the day after that, and the day after that. Because I'm giving you a second chance for Christmas. A chance to work together, and a chance to start over. Merry Christmas, Henry. And welcome home.
And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. But the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. Mind if I say a few words? Of course. I don't have a sermon prepared for you tonight. It's hard to follow the greatest story ever told, so I won't even try. But I do want to remind everyone that the greatest gift we receive is God's love. The greatest gift that we give is the love we have for one another. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right, everyone, well, I believe our program is over. Aww. Unless, of course, I'm forgetting something. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah! oh no, how could I forget Santa? Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas, boys and girls. Merry Christmas. Now that is a sight I never thought I'd live to see. Well, my money's on you for next year. You can't keep winning at darts forever, my friend. Everyone. Well, I believe this one is for Timmy. That's me. Merry Christmas, young man. Thank you. Who's Ruby? That's me. Is this really for me? Yes, it is. Merry Christmas. Is there someone here named... Maggie? Pity Betsy! Merry Christmas. I know what you did for Maggie, and I'm very proud of you. This says it's for Harper. That's me. Merry Christmas, son. Merry Christmas, children. Come, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I have to lock up the jail. Timmy, you see if you can? Oh, I'm pretty sure we'll be standing. <laughs> All we need now is some snow for a perfect Christmas Eve. No, I don't know. It's pretty clear for that. Maybe I'm asking too much. Looks like everyone enjoyed themselves. I believe they did. Surprised to see you're still here. Isn't there somewhere else you're supposed to be tonight? Not that I know of. Think again. No charge. Jesse, I need your help with something. Of course. What can I do for you? Mr. Bailey, are you sure you don't want to join us for supper? Well, that's very kind of you, but it's time for me to leave. I hope you'll come back and visit us. I will. But in the meantime, I have a favor to ask. I have a long trip ahead of me, and... Dasher here, he never signed up for that. He needs a real home. Do you know anyone in town I can trust to look after him? Someone kind and with a good heart. I know the perfect person. Do you really mean it? If you promise to take care of each other. I promise, I promise, I promise! <laughs> Come on, Dasher. 
And so, with a little help from a simple peddler who knew exactly what everyone needed, what looked like disappointment turned into a Christmas miracle. The new families from the settlement were able to move out of the tents and into real homes. Rosemary was surprised and delighted with Lee's unique gift. And the warmth of the Christmas spirit was rediscovered and reborn. By the time I got home, I didn't think there could be a more perfect Christmas. But it turned out I was wrong. The pleasure of your company is requested at the saloon. Formal attire. May I have this dance, Miss Thatcher? I would be delighted, Constable Thornton. It's been three years since I left the comforts of big city life to teach school in the little town of Hope Valley. Every winter I spend here, I become more convinced that there's nothing more beautiful than Christmas in my frontier home. It was a difficult year for many of our new neighbors. The people who settled near the river saw their homes swept away in a flood. Some even lost beloved husbands and fathers. But in the true spirit of giving, our town has joined together, promising to those less fortunate a holiday filled with comfort and joy. This is a long list. Uh, I am in charge of the Christmas committee this year. It's a, it's a bigger order than usual. Well, there's extra for the families from the settlement. It's the least we can do to show them how much we care. I agree 100%. So do you think you can get it all here before Christmas Eve? Shouldn't be a problem. Great. I'll come by later with a grocery order. Yeah, I, I wonder what Miss Laveau will say when she hears you've taken over her committee. Mrs. Coulter has been away on her honeymoon with Mr. Coulter. I heard they're due back today. And I'm sure Rosemary will be delighted that someone volunteered in her absence. You don't actually believe that, do you? Christmas is the season for miracles. Thatcher, where would you like this tree? Um, how about right here in the center of town? Sounds like the perfect place to me. 